Okay, so what I'm going to do are about seven different problems dealing with percent composition and empirical formulas, and obviously I'll do some hydrate problems. So these are all the math type problems that you should be able to do for the test. So what I recommend is look at the problem on the screen, pause it, try to do it yourself, and then if you did it, listen to the answer. If you can't do it, unpause it, and again, uh, listen to me explain how to do it, and then go try it again, see if you can do it again on your own. If you can, then that means you probably know what you're doing, if you still can't, then you still don't know, so you may need to watch it again and again and again until it kind of sinks in. All right, so here we go. This is just a basic percent composition problem. It says, which of the following has the greatest percent oxygen by mass? So you're going to have to look at all of these and figure out the percent that's oxygen. So let's deal with titanium oxide first. Again, try to pause it, or pause it and try to try them out first and then check your answers here. But this is how you would solve this. First, you, you look in the periodic table and you find titanium and titanium weighs 47.9 grams. Then you find oxygen. You know oxygen weighs 16.0, but you know you have two of them, so it's going to be 32 grams. You get the total mass, the titanium plus all the oxygen, and that's 79.9. Then we're focused on oxygen, so you're going to take the part that's oxygen, so the 32.0 grams, that's all the oxygen in there, divided by the whole thing, multiplied by 100, and then it comes out to about 40.1%. So titanium, with two oxygens there, is 40% oxygen. Iron oxide here. We've got iron, 55.8 times 2, and then we've got oxygen, 16.0 times 3. When you add it all up, you get your grand total of 159.6. Then you've got to take all of your oxygens. 16.0 times 3 is 48, so you're going to take 48 divided by... 159.6 times 100, and that gives you 30.1% oxygen. So this has less oxygen in it than that does if you had a mole of each. And finally, aluminum oxide. Figure out the masses of your aluminum. Figure out the masses of your oxygen in there. Aluminum is going to be 27.0 times 2, so that's 54.0 total. Oxygen is 16.0 times 3, so that's going to be 48.0 total. When you do your uh, total mass, you get 102.0 grams. The part that's oxygen, so 48.0 grams, divided by 102.0 grams, and you multiply by 100, and you end up with 47.1%. So this is clearly the greatest or mass of oxygen in any of these, or greatest percentage of oxygen. So aluminum oxide is the winner here. It's got the most oxygen by percent mass. All right, next one. Same idea, percent composition, but now I give you data, and you have to uh, also consider the identity of the samples um, given to you. So as the sample is analyzed and the data is provided below, determine whether or not the substance is lead 2 oxide or lead 4 oxide. Now I purposely um, wrote, the form, or wrote the names out, so you have to think about practicing uh, and writing formulas. Lead with a Roman numeral 2, that means it's going to be PB with a plus 2 charge. Over here, lead with a Roman numeral 4, means it's PB plus 4. Oxygen is always a negative 2. So over here we have lead trying to give up two electrons. Oxygen says perfect, I'll take two, and that ends up uh, bonding on a 1 to 1 ratio. So PBO for our first option. It might be that. Lead 4 oxide. If you crisscross your numbers, you're going to end up with PB2O4, and then you can reduce, so cut them down, and it's going to be PBO2. So that's our second op option. Um, what you need to do now is figure out the percent of each of these guys that is uh, over here lead. We know we're given the total mass, we're given the part that's lead. So let's look at these guys and consider the part that's lead. PBO, lead is 207.2, .2, oxygen 16.0. When you get the grand total here, we're looking at 223.2. .2. So we want to do the amount, amount that's lead divided by the total. So 207.2 divided by this, that comes out to 92.8% lead. So if this sample, this total mass of the sample and the amount of lead in here, if this data gives you a percentage that's around 93-ish, 92.8, then you know it's going to be PBO. If you get a different percentage, then you know it's going to be PBO too. Now let's just check and see what the percentage for that is. So it's going to be one lead, 207.2, two oxygens, that's 32.0. Grand total is 
what do we get? 239.2, and then you're going to do the part that's lead, 207.2 divided by the whole thing, times 100. And for PbO2, you end up with less lead, because there's more oxygen in it, so you get 86.6%. So those are our two possibilities. It could be this, or it could be this. So here we go, let's figure it out. Take your total amount that's lead, all the lead in this, divided by the total of the entire sample, divided by the 154.5 times 100, and you end up getting 86.6%. So now you know this matches that, so this substance must be PbO2, it must be lead 4 oxide. So whenever you're given data, you can worry about the data second. Look at your options first, figure out the percentage of your options, and then go tackle the data and then just match them up. All right, what mass of mercury would be found in a 50 gram sample of mercury 2 hydroxide? Well, the first thing you need to do is say to yourself, I know a portion of this 50 grams is mercury, but I don't know what percentage mercury normally makes up of mercury 2 hydroxide. So the first thing we have to do is tackle the percentage. So let's write the formula for mercury 2 hydroxide. Mercury is plus 2. I know that because of Roman numerals. I get very happy when I see Roman numerals because I don't have to think. It's going to be Hg plus 2. Hydroxide is one of those things that you should have memorized. Polyatomic ion, OH. Now we're going to crisscross, put the 2 down here, put the imaginary 1 down there. So it's Hg, and then we want two sets of hydroxide. So we actually put the OH in parentheses. In any case, now we want to find out the percent of mercury hydroxide. That's mercury. So you do the part that's mercury, 200.6 grams. There's only one of them. Then you do the part that's oxygen. That's 16.0 times 2, 32.0. And then you do the part that's hydrogen. So we got 1.0 times 2 equals 2.0. Add this all up, and you get a grand total of 234.6 grams. Now we want the percent that's mercury. So we do 200.6 divided by the whole thing, 234.6 times 100, and that comes out to 85.5% mercury. Okay. So we know this sample is 85.5% mercury. We know this sample is going to be 85.5% mercury. The question is, what's 85.5% of 50? That's our step two. We take our percent, we lose a percent sign, and we move our decimal point over. So it's 85, 5, 0.855 times 50 grams. And then when you multiply the two together, you get about 42.8 grams of mercury out of that entire 50 gram sample. That's 85.5%. So whenever you're given um, a mass of a sample, always take that and deal with it second. First thing you have to do is figure out the percent. Once you know the percent, and you just multiply percent times the uh, mass. All right, next problem. These are empirical formula problems. So it says when an oxide of potassium is decomposed, 71.70 grams of potassium and 14.68 grams of oxygen are obtained. What is the empirical formula and the name for this compound? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our masses and convert them, should be a little g here, and convert them to moles. Once we get moles, we'll look at the mole ratio. So 71.70 grams of potassium, and I want to convert to moles. So I'm going to look on the periodic table, and I'm going to see that potassium is 39.1 grams. Do the math, and you end up with 1.833 moles. It's good to keep a lot of sig figs here. You can kind of ignore what you've got. Keep a bunch of sig figs. Uh, the more numbers you go out to the right of the decimal, the better off things are going to be when you divide through. The less rounding, the less error you're going to have. All right, 14.68 grams of oxygen, 16.0 is a molar mass of oxygen, one mole on top. Divide through, and you get 0 0.9175 moles. So this is our mole ratio. We got 1.833 to 0.9175, but the problem is it's not a simplest whole number. So we're going to write this down, 1.833, and then oxygen, 0 0.9175. Now we're going to make it simplest whole number ratio by dividing through by the smallest. This is my smallest, so I divide through by that. That becomes a 1. Then divide over here by 0.9175. That goes in twice, so it's going to be K2O. And there's your formula. And then you just have to come up with a name. The naming Nothing fancy, no Roman numerals, potassium's in group one, so it always makes a plus one charge. 
So potassium, and then here's oxygen. No polyatomic, so it's oxide. Right off the periodic table, so we have an ide ending. So potassium oxide. Okay, so this problem is very, very similar. What you're going to have to do is find the empirical formula from the masses given to you, and then you're going to have to name it. So here we go, lead. Now what you should remember about lead is that it's one of those funny guys. It either makes a plus 4 or plus 2, and nitrogen always makes a negative 3. So which one is it going to be? Is it going to be the lead 4 nitride, or is it going to be the lead 2 nitride? So let's find out. First, take your grams, convert them to moles. So 183.6 grams divided by the molar mass of lead. 207.2 grams, one mole, and you end up with 0 0.886 moles of lead. And then you do the same thing for nitrogen. You start with what you have, 16.5 grams times 14.0 on the bottom, one mole here, and you end up with 1.79 moles, I'm sorry, 1.179 moles. So this is your lead, this is your nitrogen, so rewrite it, PB 0 0.886, nitrogen 1.179, pick your smallest, it's going to be the lead, so divide through, that becomes a 1, then over here, divide through, and this becomes a 1.33. So now you say a 1 to 1.33, that's still not a whole number ratio, so I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to multiply this 0.33, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 3, and that's going to make that third go up to a whole number. So 3 times 1 is going to be PB3, 3 distributed over here to the nitrogen, 3 times 1.33 is N4. So PBN4 is the formula, and then if you just want to figure out which one it is, uncrisscross it. Put the 3 over here, and put the 4 over there, and then ask yourself, is nitrogen correct with a negative 3 charge? And yes it is, it does make that kind of a charge. So it's going to be lead, Roman numerals, 4, nitride. Okay, so there you go. All right, hydrate problems. We've got two hydrate problems, and then we're all done here. So we've got a hydrate that's got 48.8% magnesium sulfate and then 51.2 water. So it's a little bit more than half water. And then it says, what's the formula? So you do this the exact same way, figure out. Uh, what your moles are. First thing you do is drop percent, change it to grams. We're going to assume our sample size is 100 grams. So 48.8 grams times, and then you got to find the uh, molar mass of magnesium sulfate. So what's magnesium sulfate? Mg plus 2, sulfate's SO4 negative 2. They hook up on a 1 to 1 ratio, so it's MgSO4. And then when you calculate the molar mass, you should get 120.4. We got uh, magnesium is 24.3, sulfur is 32.1, and then 4 oxygens comes out to 16.0 times 4 is 64. So there's your 120.4. That's how we got that number. So we know the molar mass is 120.4 grams for sulfate. That's 1 mole, or magnesium sulfate. Figure out how many moles you've got, and you've got um, 0.405 moles. Then do the same thing for water. You got 51.1 or 2 grams times 1 mole, 18 grams on the bottom. 51 divided by 18 comes out to 2.84. So there's our mole ratio, but the problem is it's not as simple as total number ratio, so we have to divide through. So MgSO4, 0 0.405, H2O, 2.84. Now you're going to divide through your smalls, which is always going to be your ionic compound here. So it's always going to be a 1, and then you want to see how many waters are attached to it, which you'll find out when you actually do the math. So this divided by that, it goes in 7 times, just about 7. So you're going to rewrite this, MgSO4.7 H2O. So magnesium sulfate, 7 H2O. That's a very basic problem. I give you the percents, or I give you the masses, and you just have to convert them to moles first, then uh, divide through by your smallest, which is always going to be your salt, and then uh, that'll tell you how many moles you have. And then just rewrite it, make sure you put your dot and then your number there. Finally, I may give you data. If you get data, you have to analyze it and then come up with your masses for the salt and your masses for the water, and then do what we just did before, convert them to moles and compare. So let's read the data and figure out what we've got. 11.4 grams, that's of your iron 3-phosphate. Let's write a formula for that real quick. 
Fe plus 3, and then phosphate is PO4, negative 3. The only way you know that is by memorizing or looking them up. So you look at the charges, and they're the same, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's going to be Fe, PO4. And anyways, 11.5 uh, gram mass of that much, or that kind of uh, hydrate, so it's iron 3 phosphate, with some water attached to it, we just don't know how much. It's a, heated in a crucible. After heating, we're left with 7.8 grams of the anhydrous. So it starts out as a hydrate with the water in it. When it's done, it's just plain old FePO4. There's no water attached. So you know how much of this you're left with. So we'll start with 7.8 grams of this uh, iron phosphate. When you calculate the uh, molar mass of one iron, one phosphorus, and four oxygens, you end up with 150.8 grams. That's one mole. And that comes out to 0 0.0517 moles of this stuff. Then you got to do the water. Now, we don't know. It doesn't tell us in the data exactly how much water we lost, but we can figure it out. We know we started with 11.5 grams with the water in the beginning, and we ended up with 7.8 grams without the water. This is just the anhydrous stuff. So when you subtract the two, you could find out that 3.7 grams of water has gone missing somewhere. We lost that much. So you do the same thing, convert that to moles. 3.7 grams divided by 18.0 grams, molar mass of water. And then you get 0 0.2056 moles. So this is our salt, this is our water, and we just have to find the whole number ratio between the two. So write your formula for your salt. FEPO4, 0 0.0517, and then water, 0 0.2056. Pick your smallest. It's always going to be this one when you're doing hydrates. That'll always be a 1. And then divide this one by your smallest, 0.517, I guess. And then see how many times that goes in there. And when you do, it comes out to just about a 4. So you're going to rewrite it, FEPO4.4. H2O. And there's your official formula for your hydrate. All right, so try these problems again. If you struggled with any of them, listen to the explanations again. Uh, go back in your notes, look at some of the similar types of problems. But these are the problems that you're going to see are similar to this on the exam.